Whenever I drop a vertical video onto a horizontal timeline, I usually have to get pretty creative to make it look nice. For a shot like this, I would first go ahead and duplicate it so I have a secondary version. I would select the bottom layer, scale it all the way up to 400%, go into my effects, look up the Gaussian blur, apply that onto the lower layer, then I'd bring the amount down, then I would look up the drop shadow and apply that onto the top layer, bring that off to the side, maybe blur it. We could even go in and colorize this bottom layer and we could change those colors to be whatever we want. Maybe we want more of a bluish tone or something like that. But that is a lot of steps, which might be okay for a single project, but what if you have a lot of projects with vertical videos? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a powerful Apple Motion template that can do all of this with a single click of a button. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. The first thing is first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can go up to file, then select new from project browser. For this project, we are going to select the final cut title. Going to the top right, you can select whatever preset and frame rate you typically like to work with inside of Final Cut Pro, and I recommend something around five to 10 seconds for your duration. After that, we can go ahead and push open. The first steps we need to take inside of Apple Motion is to delete this type text here layer. Now, typically in my videos, I like to also delete the title background. However, for this video, the title background is one of the most important elements. So instead of deleting it, we are actually going to enable it. Now, just so we can get a good idea of what is going on, I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask onto this title background. So. To do that, we'll go on down to the rectangle tool and just click and drag pretty much anywhere inside of our video inspector. This mask is not going to stick around so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to enable us to see exactly what's happening on the screen. Now that we've done that, go ahead and select your title background. Firstly, we wanna go ahead and add in a nice background behind it. So to do that, select your title background and push K. This is going to create a clone layer. Selecting that clone layer, let's go ahead and push Command and left bracket. That's going to bring it down in the layer stack. You can also just click and drag if that's easier for you. From there, let's go on over into our inspector and locate our properties. Finding the scale value, go ahead and just drag that all the way up to 400%. Now that we've done that, we need to blur out this backdrop. So to do that, select your clone layer, go on up to filters, then go down to blur and select Gaussian blur. In here, you can see we have an amount slider and I can go ahead and just drag that up. And if you wanted extra control over this inside of Final Cut Pro, you could just click on this down arrow and select publish. Next, I wanna add some additional separation between our title background to the background layer. So to do that, let's first select our title background right click on it and then select group. Now that it's in a group, let's go on over into our properties and find the drop shadow parameter. Let's enable that, then pressing show, we can go ahead and drag out the distance and the blur. And again, if you want control over any of these parameters, you can just click on this down arrow and push publish and then it will show up inside of Final Cut Pro. Also, pro tip, you could make this a glow by changing it from being black over to white or whatever bright color you want, and now it will look much more like a glow effect. Additionally, I also want this cutout to have a nice border. So to achieve that, let's go on up to filters, go down to border and select stroke. This is going to apply a nice red border to everything. Going to the left side, let's change the color from red over to white. I happen to think that looks a bit more elegant. We could publish that color parameter if we wanted to. We could also publish the width parameter so that we can adjust all of that over inside of Final Cut Pro. Now there's a few other areas that I might want to add some contrast between the background and the foreground. Firstly, let's select our clone layer and go on up to filters, go down to color, and we can apply the colorize filter. This is gonna give us the same controls that we had over in Final Cut Pro, but now they'll all be embedded in this single plugin. From there, we can go to the left side and find the remap black and white, and we could just publish those two parameters. Also, if there's a default setting that you like to use the most, say for example, you want everything to usually be blue, we could push it over there. You could even bring down the mix slider if you wanted to. So it's just very slightly blue, but still retains a lot of their original color. And finally, one last area where I really wanna differentiate things is by adding in some nice texture. Now you can get as creative as you would like with your textures. One way to do that would be to go up to filters, go down to stylize, and then select add noise. From there, we could go on over to the left side. We could make the noise monochrome. We could bring down the amount quite a bit. We could change the type over to Gaussian noise. 
And if you didn't want it to animate so it looks like static, we could go ahead and disable the auto animate checkbox. This is a great way to add some texture into your background. But another option is to take a look at all of your generators. Let's go ahead and disable the add noise. We'll go over to library, go to generators, and you will notice you have a ton of different options with your generators. One of my favorites is this Trukit tiles. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that and we're just gonna place it just above the clone layer. From there, we can go to our inspector and in here we can find all sorts of options. The main one we wanna take a look at is this color two. Let's click on that white value and just find this opacity slider and bring that all the way down to zero. From there, we could change the color of these black lines if we wanted to. We could also publish that as a parameter to adjust over inside of Final Cut Pro. We could even go into our parameters and bring down the opacity. I suggest maybe even playing around with the different blend modes. Really, it's up to you how creative you wanna be with these different textures in the backdrop and what kind of style you want for your channel. For my Patreon download, I'm gonna include a whole bunch of different generator options so you can really play around and get the exact look you are after. Now that we've done all that, make sure you go through and publish all of the different parameters you might want to adjust over in Final Cut Pro. And then finally, before we publish this, we need to select our rectangle mask and go ahead and delete that. Everything is going to go back to exactly how it was. However, if I move this title background, you'll notice that everything is still there. I'm gonna push Command S to save it and we could just call it whatever we want. I'll just call it vertical video formatter. And from there, we can go into our categories and I'm gonna throw this into my tutorials category. Pushing publish, we can go on over into Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, we can find our titles. We'll scroll on down and locate the category that we save this to, which is tutorials. And we could look up the vertical video formatter. I'll apply this on top of a vertical video. And just like that, you can see that all of those changes we created over inside of Motion have now been applied onto our video. And what's super cool is we could even select the original video and bring down the scale a bit. And now it will fit inside of our frame really nicely and everything is going to work exactly as it should be. Plus, if I were to go in and crop off the top and the bottom, you can see how those adjustments are being made in real time all inside of Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you five vertical video hacks for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.